Welcome, welcome, welcome. Major Michel here. Today's topic, Mind, Character and Personality, Chapter 2, The Christian and Psychology. Today we are going to look at laws of the mind ordained by God, true principles of psychology in scripture. Mind devoted to God develops harmoniously. The science of a pure Christian life, surrounded with an atmosphere of peace, the religion of Christ, an effectual remedy, entering the region of peace. Let's get into it. Laws of the mind ordained by God. He who created the mind and ordained its laws, provided for its development in accordance with them. And as a note, there is perfect harmony between the Bible and true science. Psychology is the science and the study of the mind and human behavior. This is from Education, page 41. So, I hope everyone understands this one because it's pretty straightforward about the Bible and science and psychology. Let's go to part 2. True Principles of Psychology in Scripture The true principles of psychology are found in the Holy Scriptures. Man knows not his own value. He acts according to his unconverted temperament of character because he does not look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of his faith. He who comes to Jesus, he who believes on him and makes him his example, realizes the meaning of the word, to them give he power to become the sons of God. Those who pass through the experience of true conversion will realize with keenness of perception their responsibility to God to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling, their responsibility to make complete their recovery from the leprosy of sin. Such an experience will lead them humbly and trustfully to place their dependence upon God. Manuscript released, page 121. So, we need to get to the point where we understand what we are looking for, because I can tell you, if you want to have a good life, a good purpose of life, look to God, because He will guide you into the the happy place that you are looking for. But most of the time, we look elsewhere, we look at the world, and look at what other people are doing, and this messes up with our critical thinking. Third part, mind devoted to God develops harmoniously. God takes men as they are and educates them for His service if they will yield themselves to Him. The Spirit of God, received into the soul, quickens all its faculties. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the mind that is devoted unreservedly to God develops harmoniously and is strengthened to comprehend and fulfill the requirements of God. The weak, vacillating character becomes changed to one of strength and steadfastness. Continual devotion establishes so close a relationship between Jesus and his disciples that the Christian becomes like his master in character. He has clearer, broader views. His discernment is more penetrative, his judgment better balanced. So quickened is he by the life-giving power of the Son of Righteousness that he is enabled to bear much fruit to the glory of God. Gospel Workers, page 285 and 286. So listen to this. Those of you who have, who are weak of character, uh, and there's, there are people out there that have weak characters, meaning your character is who you are, and the person is a weak person because 
the source that they can find character building, they keep rejecting that source, which is Jesus Christ. And I'm going to give a disclaimer. This chapter is for the Christians primarily. And of course, the worldly can, if they want, choose to uh, get some of that knowledge. But I will not be looking at secular psychology research because this is not a general part. This is most likely for those that are Christians. And so what we are going to look at is only this book, which is Mind, Character, and Personality, and the Bible. The Holy Spirit will guide you to that source where you can have better discernment, better views, or clearer views. And actually, you can influence even those that don't even believe in God. Because when they see somebody who has a character like yours, that is solely and grounded upon God, and you do things trustfully and truthfully, that can be a turn on to them to wanting to experience what you are experiencing in life based on your character building. Part 3. The Science of a Pure Christian Life The science of a pure, wholesome, consistent Christian life is obtained by studying the Word of the Lord. This is the highest education that any earthly being can obtain. These are the lessons that the students in our schools are to be taught that they may come forth with pure thoughts and clean minds and hearts prepared to ascend the ladder of progress and to practice the Christian virtues. This is why we wish our schools connected with our sanitariums and our sanitariums with our schools. These institutions are to be conducted in the simplicity of the gospel given in the Old Testament and the New. Manuscript release, page 86. What we've been looking at is, most people to them, the highest education you can get is maybe a PhD or a doctorate or a fellowship after you get your doctorate. But according to the book, that the messenger of the Lord has written, and according to the Bible, the highest education is studying the Word of God. Interestingly, how now we are putting down the Word of God to get anything else. But it doesn't work that way. Actually, if you want to understand certain things that you are trying to study, and you have a hard time understanding it, one thing you could do is First, open God's Word and spend some time there. And then you see, once you get back to what you're trying to understand, it comes quickly. So that's the power of God's Word in it. Let's move on to the next part. Surrounded with an atmosphere of peace. All who are under the training of God need the quiet hour for communion with their own hearts, with nature, and with God. We must individually hear Him speaking to the heart. When every other voice is hushed, and in quietness we wait before Him, the silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God. He bids us be still and know that I am God. Amid the hurrying throngs, and the strain of life's intense activities, he who is thus refreshed will be surrounded with an atmosphere of light and peace. He will receive a new endowment of both physical and mental strength. Ministry of Healing, page 58. I don't think I have much to say on that part. So, as Christian, we should basically listen to God when he's speaking to us and quiet out everything else so we can hear him. Next part. The religion of Christ an effectual remedy. Satan is the originator of disease and the physician is warring against his work and power. Sickness of the mind prevails everywhere. Infidels have made the most of these unfortunate cases 
in which home troubles we most foreseen, fear of an eternally burning hell, have unbalanced the mind, attributing insanity to religion. But this is a gross libel, and one which they will not be pleased to meet by and by. The religion of Christ, so far from being the cause of insanity, is one of the most effectual remedies, for it is a potent soother to the nerves. Testimony for the Church, Volume 5, pages 443 and 444. Interesting. Satan here brings diseases, and then he basically says that it is Jesus who is bringing diseases. But Jesus is saying, Guys, if you come to me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. So how is that Jesus is bringing disease when he is promising to give you rest? The one thing we have to understand is, Satan wants us to know that he is going to give you rest. When in reality, if you look at the Bible, you see that Satan is the one who hates his life. So somebody who hates his life, cannot bring something good to you. And the reason he hates his life is because of what he lost in heaven. And also, he knows that you have, you may be able to get to heaven if you go to Christ. And because he hates you, he wants to do everything he can to keep you here with him by not loving Jesus Christ. And so, how does he get you to not love Jesus Christ? is to lie to you by making you think that it is Jesus who is causing all these diseases. And of course, nobody likes diseases. Let's move on to the last part. Entering the region of peace. When temptations assail you, when care, perplexity, and darkness seem to surround your soul, Look to the place where you last saw the light. Rest in Christ's love and under his protecting care. Entering into communion with the Savior, we enter the region of peace. Ministry of Healing, page 250. Now, what we have is, this is something for the Christian. Like I mentioned earlier, this chapter is mostly towards the Christian. But of course, as Christians, we are never to keep the message for ourselves, but to share it with those that do not have that joy that we have. And so this message is also extended to the non-Christian or secular people, that they may also take a look where they can find the peace that they are looking for. So, this was the first part of chapter 2, which is entitled The Christian and Psychology. I will see you again another time. Until then, bye for now. Mario out.